who's driving your bus? Is it you or the customers? And I know there's a fine line, but this is an exact example, you know, uh, of that, of asking yourself, who's driving the bus? Because, you know, are you going to go out of your way to do a yard on Friday that's in an area that you're maybe, maybe you're already mowing on Friday, but if it's outside your mowing area, you know, how much time are you going to waste getting going from point A to point B? You know, and we always try to convince ourselves that, oh, well, well, you know, it's it's going to lead to more. It's going to lead to more, Wayne. You just don't understand. I'm trying to build my business. I absolutely understand it from a business building perspective. But also, what I also understand from a build, business building perspective is how quick and easy it is to lose money when you start running around town on, on should have, could have, and would have. We're working too hard rather than working smart. And we've all heard that a thousand times, probably a million times, or even maybe more than a million. But the reality of it is, let's work smarter, not harder. It doesn't always have to be a backbreaking experience to make you feel good about, you know, making some money. You know, sometimes you look at something and it's like the old thing about lemons, right? If you, you know, if you got lemons, make lemonade. You know, you got dandelions, blow it, make a wish, make, hope maybe, maybe the wish is they hit in the 10 yards next door, you know, or down the street from the yard you're already not doing. And, uh, they're going to get some dandelions in your yard. Maybe that's the wish, but maybe more realistically, maybe more realistically, you look at things that you think aren't going as well as they should. And you know that, Hey, let's just keep working at it. Let's keep working at it. And those dreams will come true. You know, I, speaking of dreams and things coming true, had a cl- customer call yesterday that I uh, wanted to share it with you guys. And I've known this person for, gosh, from well, from my days of working in uh, financial aid, when I, and this goes back to 1983 or so, 84. Uh, she was a student at this, one of the schools that I worked. That's how long I've known the lady, and now she's a lady. But anyway, now she's got a nursery uh, here in Louisville and uh, sells nursery, more more retail to homeowners than she does to people like you and I. But uh, anyway, Gail called yesterday, and she's like, Wayne, I hate to be that person and call, she says, but I got some dandelions on the side of my property over there. And I'm like, really? I mean, that's I didn't say that. I did not say that. I mean, from a customer service perspective, at that point, she's calling as a client, not as a friend. But I got to thinking about it after afterwards, and I said, "Hey, Gail," I said, "All right, you know, we'll take care of it." I said, "It's." So I looked it up, and it it'd been about four and a half weeks since we made our last application. So she's coming up on another application cycle. But I mean, I get it. But I mean, when you call in, you say, "I hate to be that client." but I got some weeds in my yard. Well, you know, I got to explain to everybody that calls with that concern. Hey, we're sorry you got weeds, but, you know, that's why there's a weed control in each application that we make during the growing season. I mean, that's just a reality of it, you know. And I got to thinking about it last night, actually, and and maybe I was over the top with my thinking here. Maybe Maybe I was a bit over the top with my thinking, but I thought, I wonder if I went out there and bought a bush from her. Let's just take an azalea for an example. It could be anything. But let's say I went out and bought a bush from her. And, I, you know, and then in the spring I call her up and I'll say, yeah, Gail, I hate to be that customer, but this azalea is not blooming properly. There's more blooms on the right side than there is the left side. I wonder, I just wonder if nursery people get that complaint. I'm, I'm going to have to ask my buddy at Brehob Nurseries and the guys we buy from here in lo- local too. If guys, if people complain about that, I thought that might be a legitimate complaint. You know, let's just go out and buy a few bushes and say, Gail, I hate to be that customer. And I'm not throwing Gail under the bus. I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm more thinking out loud and rambling more than anything about it. But people expect their lawns to be perfect. And I mean, you and I, when it comes to making applications on lawns, we see their yard, what? If, if from a fertilization and weed control standpoint, you know, maybe 
eight to ten times a year. You know, they see it every day. So it's fine to let us, hey, let us know if you got an issue going on. But don't call up complaining necessarily. And it's not that our feelings get hurt when we get complaints because they don't. You know, it means we're real. But also, you know, you're going to have some weeds in your yard. I mean, 100% weed-free, I mean, it happens, and we all got lawns that are that away. But the reality of it is it takes a while to get a yard to where you're really gaining that kind of control on a yard through not just your weed control. And that's what I try to explain to our customers is, you know, it's not about spraying another weed control. It's not about killing more clover or dandelions or chickweed or crabgrass. It's about increasing turf density. So, you know, if you hired us simply to kill weeds, you might have hired us for the wrong reason. And that's part of our presentation when we're talking to somebody about our services that, you know, weed control is just part of what we do. Our ultimate goal is to increase turf density, and that's going to require aeration and seeding. And I think a lot of people don't understand that, you know, because you know it and I know it, but sometimes our customers don't understand it, that, you know, we come in and we kill weeds. The first thing in that is not going to be a grass plant unless we put some grass seeds in that pl- in that place to take up that space, right? You know, so part of it goes back to educating your customer, and I'll take part of the blame on that, and I think we should all own part of the blame on that. But at the end of the day, I think we got to think about too how how what's the, what's the reality of that. <laughs> Appreciate that, Mary Jo. So you know what the reality of it is. You know we can spray the herbicides, not the uh, the answer over and over and over and over and over and over again. You know the herbicides. You look at any herbicide label, and none of those are going to tell you that they kill a hundred percent of the weeds. You know. But what they tell you is they'll gain control, you know, based on what you're spraying. Maybe it's 80, 85% control on an application. But the only way we're really going to make that lawn the golf course that some of them want is to aerate and overseed along with our lawn applications. There's other things that have to take place. So, uh, 